Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's tutorial we are going to use Advanced Design System ADS to perform AC simulations. So let's first look in what kind of problem we use AC circuit simulation. So generally what you will find is that uh, the DAT problem will have uh, the output of that problem will have in general the horizontal axis as frequency. So in AC circuit simulation generally uh, we sweep the frequency of the source. So the horizontal axis in general will be frequency. So one example of that kind of problem will be plotting the impedance variation of this resistor uh, with respect to frequency. So the circuit that you see here is a high frequency equivalent circuit of a typical resistor. Um, <clears throat> you have the parasitic uh, inductance, the lead inductances and the parasitic capacitances and R is the nominal value of that resistor for which this equivalent circuit is. So in this problem if you see we are, we are plotting the impedance, uh, the magnitude of the impedance Z uh, with, and it is uh, varying with respect to frequency. So in this, this is a perfect uh, problem to per, uh, perform an AC simulation uh, to find the, this variation. So let's, uh, before we do that using ADS, let's try to uh, see how we, that impedance is related uh, or how we can find uh, or how we can set up our circuit to find that impedance variation. So first notice that if you have a resistor R and if I inject a test current IT and if I measure that voltage here at this node VT across that resistor, then that ratio of VT and IT will give me the value of R. So this is the simple Ohm's law that we are using to find the resistance. So if we, if we don't know the resistance, our trick will be to inject a current IT and find the voltage that develops across that resistor and take that ratio and that will give me the value of this resistor. As simple as that. So, uh, there, there is another way of doing that, of course, you can alternatively uh, utilize a voltage source here, VT, and find the current going into this resistor, IT, and then again take that ratio VT over IT and that will give you that resistance. So that, that's the basic principle and it becomes a bit more simpler if you assume that the current IT that you are injecting here, that itself is one ampere but because in that case if it is equal to unity so in that case r is just equal to vt so whatever voltage you get here it's a, a numerical value will be equivalent to the value of r because it is just equal to one so r is equal to vt so that is the technique we are going to apply to find the impedance of this two terminal device so i will just put a ground here at this terminal and then inject a current source from here, inject a current from here and measure the corresponding voltage here and take that ratio or if that IT is equal to just unity, the injected current, then that voltage here will just be equal to R. Now, uh, well, I mean, this is valid, for example, if the resistor is a pure resistor like 100 ohm, but of course, in a circuit like this, when you have frequency dependent elements like inductor J omega L impedance or capacitor 1 over J omega C impedance. So in that case, your impedance is going to be a complex number. So you'll have to plot both the magnitude and the phase. But normally we are interested for in the magnitude variation of that impedance. So this is what we are going to plot. So to that end, first of all, I will create a workspace. So that I have already created, I'm calling it tutorial underscore AC workspace. You can do it from here or you can do it by just clicking this. Please see the previous tutorial on DC circuit simulation using ADS. That's where I talk about how to create workspace. So now if you wanted to add a schematic, so just click here and let's call it the, uh, say for example, um, a microwave, microwave resistor. So a microwave resistor equivalent circuit. Say so create a schematic. And now 
the model simply has a nominal register and then it has two inductors here and here then it has two capacitors this is that parasitic capacitance and this is the interlead capacitance that is usually very small so we will ignore that let's wire them up and this one comes here this one comes here and maybe here and here all right this one we don't need that extra so just click here and delete then add maybe some extra wire here escape and click here and click here and maybe escape to come out of that mode okay so this is that basic circuit and you can enter for example this was four picofarad this is uh, 1000 ohm or one kilo ohm that we that is the value of the nominal resistor and these are I guess it was 20 ohm, 60 nano Henry so 60 here and 60 here this one so this CB is very small so normally you ignore it so what we can do is we will keep it here for now and so that it doesn't come into picture when we are simulating we can use this uh, deactivate block so if you click here and click here so it will get deactivated and if you want to activate it again to see its impact just click here and it will and rerun the simulation and it will show you the simulation so let's click here deactivate and press escape so this is this one is just for deactivating that component so it is as if that component is not there so these two wires are just dangling in air so they don't make any uh, difference and the other one is a, a short circuit so that you can also utilize for series element for example if you want to have a connection from here to here but you don't want to see that inductance you can short circuit this one so that you also utilize sometime all right so let's go ahead and put a ground at the other terminal and connect in uh, an ac source so let's go here sources frequency domain and let's grab a current source we are going to inject current and control r let's put it here and then press f5 to move this text on this side for example escape and move this one here just to uh, make it look neater so click here click here click here click here escape now let's name this node for example in normally I don't give zine as name because those names are standard variable in ADS so I avoid using zine and those kind of names so just let's put in here so the name of that node is in now double click on this one and let's put its uh, define its value as one uh, maybe ampere so that is one uh, oh not that sorry not the DC the AC value is one just delete that milli and that becomes one ampere so this is a one ampere current with a phase of zero so that's why it is polar one and zero so uh, that is the standard AC source with a phase of zero so one ampere current being injected into this and its variable frequency variable is free so that we will be sweeping uh, for for the, that frequency range that is shown here for now so once this simulation is set up here uh, the uh, we have to add the simulation controller so we will go here in simulation AC for example and grab that AC controller so in that AC con simulation controller you have the start frequency and the stop frequency and because our range is quite wider so we will rather use the logarithmic sweep not the linear sweep uh, so let's say that our frequency is going from one each sorry excuse me what was that okay so 1e2 and maybe Hertz let me go here and see 1e2 so 1e2 is 10 to 2 basically Hertz so 1e2 and this stop frequency is a uh, 1e maybe it's not taking a small e what is it maybe okay one oh no it should take one e two okay let's 
or let's for ex write 100 hertz for example to be on safer side and maybe uh, 1e10 is basically 10 gigahertz so let's say uh, 10 gigahertz and number of points per decade so basically if you look at this graph it has decades like you know 10 to 2 10 to 3 10 to 4 10 to 5 10 to 6 so it has decades from 10 to 2 to 10 to 3 one decade 10 to 3 to 10 to 4 another decade so in each of those interval we will have certain number of points where it is simulating it cannot simulate at infinite number of points from here to here so you'll have to assign some number of points in general so let's take that number of points in each frequency decade as uh, 10 for now and we'll see how it how it looks like uh, later on so we set up our uh, um, uh, this this sweep we don't have we have not chosen the step size it's not um, uh, it's not depicted here but what you can do is you can go here in display and you can choose to for example show the start a stop and maybe somewhere number of points uh, there should be somewhere number of points uh, sweep variable start to stop len uh, there should be somewhere number of points if it is not we will not bother about that but just have a look if if there is number of points you can you know maybe choose to show that here but you know it doesn't matter because once you have said that here in the frequency tab it is there so we can always come there and quickly uh, save this one and change those variables so this this one everything seems to be uh, set up now so we have one kilo ohm resistor four picofarad uh, capacitor four puff capacitor here 60 nano henry uh, lead inductances here and here and we have the current source here so now i think we are ready for the simulation so just hit run the simulation button and lo and behold we have that uh, window so we are gonna plot uh, take the rectangular plot from here and let's plot that variable in and we are interested in the magnitude of that in and that's how it looks like oh that's strange but okay let's see why it looks like that maybe first of all we have to go here in the plot option and because we are using the x-axis as logarithmic so log and maybe say for example here we can definitely enter 1e2 because i see it's a 1e2 to 1e10 and then in a step size of 1e1 and let me see how that looks like okay so that's how it looks like well uh, also recall that our y-axis is uh, y-axis is from 10 to minus 1 to 10 to 5 so that we can definitely also change so double click on this one plot option y axis and we don't want it auto scale rather we will define our own scale so 1e one minus 1 to 1e5 that is 10 to 5 and in the steps of 1e1 in the steps of uh, 10 and again that is logarithmic so press ok what happened did i did we choose something Ooh. is that linear or logarithmic let me see in the graph uh, 10 to 1 that looks logarithmic to me let me see here what did we do how did that got change automatically so 1e minus 1 1e uh, one and press ok oh lo and behold here you have that so uh, now you can compare so you can click here to for example see how this graph looks like and it's very similar to what you got here so at low frequencies that let me just double click on that line and say that is two that will look a bit better click here somewhere okay so at lower frequencies those uh, parasitic inductance and capacitance are not there so that value of the resistor is the nominal value of resistor 
1000 ohm or 1 kilo ohm and then as the frequency goes higher um, initially this capacitance will dominate so you have the capacitive impact here and because ultimately the inductor will always win because its impedance varies with j omega l directly proportional to frequency so this will dominate at a later frequency so you can see here you have the inductive behavior here you have the capacitive behavior and from here to here you have the resistive behavior so your resistor is useful until around this frequency uh, um, so uh, this simulation is very useful in determining that fact where like you know the capacitive and inductive behavior will start and how this uh, you know uh, resistor that we always think to be one kilo ohm looks like at high frequency also i noticed that you know that graph is not very uniform so we can increase the number of points of simulation per decade a bit and press okay and that will start looking a bit more yeah more uniform like so so uh, this is how you perform AC simulation and uh, and specifically uh, this is how you find the impedance of a component using this simple Ohm's law trick and what else and let's also while we are here see the impact of this one so uh, we will first activate this component by just you know clicking here and then clicking here and press escape to come out of that mode and I know that this capacitance is much much smaller so maybe let's see if what happens if this is uh, 100 times smaller than that um, capacitance up there, the presidic capacitance. So interlead capacitance is usually much smaller compared to that one. So let's go ahead and uh, click on that one, uh, hit run. So, oh, so that adds up another kind of, you know, resonance frequency up there. So it does have impact, but well, as since we will stop using the resistor, uh, beyond that frequency so we don't know or we don't care what happens there so uh, it, it does that that does impact the overall impedance but at a much higher frequency what is that warning list let me yeah let me clean that and let me rerun and see if there is any error I don't think yeah so I don't know maybe I pressed something and that might have caused that error but this is normally how you perform AC simulation uh, using ADS um, let me see what are the other variables I think that's it yeah another feature while we are here okay there's just one more thing before I go here I wanted to introduce that history feature so let me um, close that and deactivate that and run the simulation and what I will do here I will right click on this one and you can turn off that ADS logo from here itself like you know hide that one so it will hide that one but there is another feature in this one somewhere that says uh, where was it right click on this one says history somewhere history yes so let's say history on and what it will do is if I now activate this component and run the simulation see what happens Ooh, look here so we already had that graph from the previous um, simulation and we turn on the history and what we see here is the another graph so that blue graph is basically including this one so sometimes you can also do this and this is very useful when you are comparing uh, you know two different scenario so with and without the this capacitance c2 here so this is very useful and then of course you can just go here and turn off the history and it will remove the previous simulation here so i hope that you learned something in this simulation and in uh, today's uh, session and you found this useful thank you very much uh, very much for uh, watching this and for your time control what was that control q no shift cube.